Overall, I really like living in Spain. Spain is simply a very likable and pleasant place to be, and this appears to be the opinion of most people. If you need any evidence, simply look at the number of foreigners that permanently relocate to the sunny southern European nation, not to mention the amount of tourists. Therefore, this video does not come with the overall message that Spain is a bad place to be, on the contrary. But even the most paradise-like destinations have downsides, and naturally so does Spain. These reasons I'm about to share may not affect your perceptions the slightest, but they could also be deal breakers. Let me know in the comments what these facts about Spain mean to you, and don't forget to watch till the end to learn about points of criticism I often hear but don't find to be true. Noise tolerance is definitely a matter of culture. In some cultures, being loud is simply as natural as breathing. In other places, for example where I come from, it is not tolerated to the same extent. And although Spanish people definitely aren't the loudest people on earth, you are going to hear a lot of yelling, doors slamming, and children screaming. And since the Spanish typically go to bed, pretty late, it is not uncommon for this noise to go on till very late. Whereas some people consider being as quiet as possible a very considerate model of behavior, in Spain it is a little bit the other way around, where being considerate involves being okay with other people's loudness. So if you're sensitive to noise, you should either avoid Spain or alternatively move out in the middle of nowhere. It is no secret that most European countries charge a high income tax, and Spain is no exception. Therefore, if it is your goal to pay less taxes, Spain is not the place to go. However, that is not so much why I have included this in this video, because the thing about the Spanish tax system is that it can be extremely unfair if you are self-employed or working freelance. The thing is that Spain has a high social security flat rate that you must pay if you work for yourself in some capacity. This means that you can end up paying a high percentage of your income to taxes with a relatively low income. This is somewhat of a reversed Robin Hood principle, and personally this is my major problem with living here in Spain, also because it has a huge psychological effect since being self-employed inherently carries a lot of uncertainty, plus then the fact that you have to pay almost 300 euros in social security regardless of your income or lack of such. Now, the Spanish authorities are planning a change of this system, but the existence of a flat rate will persist. If you come from a country that is warm year-round, or a country that uses central heating, you are very likely going to find winters in Spain relatively cold. It is not common for Spanish houses to have central heating, and in addition, many buildings are made so that they stay cold in summer, which consequently has the unfortunate effect that they are also cold in winter. So if you're used to walking around at home wearing only a t-shirt during the coldest of winter months, it may take some getting used to, and you might want to find a sweater. Of course, you can heat up your home using electric heaters, but since electricity in Spain is ridiculously expensive, this is a very pricey solution in the long run. Spanish bureaucracy is an interesting one, but definitely not the worst in the world. But if you hate administrative offline hurdles, you are likely going to find moving to Spain a bit tedious, even if you are a European citizen and therefore don't need a visa. Because even without a visa, you still have to apply for NIA, a sort of tax ID number that is also used for other purposes and is issued as a piece of paper and not a card. And then you need to go to another office to register for social security, which is a separate number. Then you also need to register your address at city hall. And then you can go get a doctor through the public healthcare system. And they actually give you a card, but this card has yet a third number on it. And you should also go back to where you got your NIA in the first place in order to get a residency card, which ironically enough isn't a real card, but a green piece of paper that easily breaks. And no, you aren't actually allowed to laminate it. Plus it isn't valid without your passport, so it is basically useless. So basically there are a lot of different ID numbers you need to get, and you need to go to a lot of different offices. On the upside though, most banks Banking activities can be taken care of online, but expect most things public to be offline. Alright, I hope the points already mentioned have been helpful, and now we're on to the points of criticism I often hear but don't find to be true. 
I think Spain takes way too much criticism for being inefficient. The trains leave on time, offices and stores generally open when they claim to open, and people in general respect deadlines. I'm sure that you can find countless examples of situations in which I would be wrong, but after having spent three years here, I cannot say that a lack of punctuality or disrespect of my time has been an issue. I think this is a cultural myth that foreigners like to blame, as it becomes a sort of universal scapegoat explanation for when something doesn't turn out exactly as planned. There is a fine line between being rude and being very direct. In a way, I understand why some foreigners feel that the Spanish are rude, but the vast majority of this feeling is probably a result of a very direct communication style and the loud tone of voice. Yes, Spanish people yell also when they're happy about something. In my experience, people here are very friendly and polite in their own very forthcoming way. All right, guys, that was it for today. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you in advance and see you in the next one. Bye.